welcome back, guys. This is the GSTL. It's F United versus OGSTL. I am Wolf, and with me is Doa. How are you doing, Doa? I am doing awesome. Everybody knows how much I love the Team League. This is my favorite part of every week, and we've got two really interesting matches today. We've got, uh, I guess it would be the last match for these guys right here, F United. They're coming out. Unfortunately, they're not going to make the playoffs, but they're still playing for pride, Wolf. Yeah, they've that's, that's a very good point. Obviously, you can see a lot of foreigners there, a lot of Swedes. Yep. <laughs> Just very, two of them, actually. But that's that's a third of the team. That's, that's a lot, man. That's 33.3% repeating team members. But as you can see there, it is a small team. Only six members here. We've got Lin, Moon, and Soccer on the Korean side of things. And then on the foreigner side, we've got Naniwa, Thorzane, and Phoenix. Keep in mind, uh, for those of you guys who are We Made Fox fans, this is the last time you'll ever see We Made Fox as an organization in yeah. esports. This is it, this is the last time. So keep that in mind. You can see Moon and Lin back there, kind of sitting in the back row, just kind of looking at each other going, well, this is really it, man. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of sad, but hopefully they go out with a bang. And look at that, their key players and their closers, all foreign players. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Interesting. Thorzane's done really well in the team league. He's got a good amount of wins. He's got himself a nickname in the Korean scene out of it. Uh, Naniwa and Phoenix have each had a couple wins, but overall, you know, haven't performed quite as well. There's uh, a little bit of drama possibly going on between Naniwa and MC that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Kind of a funny experience, but there's the result so far. They did beat MVP. Um, but other than that, Things haven't gone too well, Wolf. No, they have not. Nope. You can see not very many players on the team, just six. <laughs> Two Bros is a Zerg and three Terrans. Yep, that's right. As long as your team is half Terran, then you're doing it the proper Korean way to put together a StarCraft II team. So <laughs> there is the team, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, Naniwa, he's uh, I as far as I've, we've talked to him a lot, he's staying with us at the God Mouse again now for a little while, and he really feels, well, not very confident in his play right now. No, know? he doesn't. Yeah, I, he's he's been kind of shaken by the Korean scene. There's Thorzane. Everybody the wants to see this guy play. That's right. <laughs> Call him the Spoon Terran because he's so patient that he kills his enemies as if he were killing them with a spoon. Yeah, it takes which, that long. <laughs> if you've seen that YouTube video, man, that's a that's a painful way to go. It doesn't look very comfortable at all. And Love here, to death, man. <laughs> I have such an epic song to choose for your intro. I think song. they've got a good chance of uh, clubbing F United to death today. <laughs> We'll see, man. I mean, there's OGSTL, only member of Team Liquid here participating is Hero, of course. Yep. But these guys, I don't know. They, uh, they've they done so-so in the Team League. They, they've done okay. Yeah, and uh, in fact, if they win today, it's the only way they can reclaim yeah. playoff spot. Yeah, that's right. They uh, they're, That is kind of the exciting part of this match is that these guys do need to win. I mean, obviously it's like, whoa, they're against F United, but, you know, F United's beaten MVP, you know, yeah. they've shown that they can win games, so it's not like it's going to be a, a complete walkover or anything like that. They're going to have to take it seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if they don't, then uh, then they'll lose. Simple as that. Simple I mean, as that. Uh, The guys, only way they can make it to the playoffs if they lose is if they only lose by one point. Yeah. That's the only way. So... Look at these guys. MC the closer there. Yep. No big spoiler. Obviously, not a supernova on top. Some of their best players, their key players there. They like to use Cezanne a lot. You can see he's the captain of the team. Yeah. That's that's how it always kind of been a puzzling choice for me that they've been using Cezanne a lot because he's just not... I, with the other people that are on the team, he's just not very good. You know, he, is, he hasn't shown as many results as some of the other players, that's for sure. Yeah, He certainly hasn't hasn't played terribly well in the team league. I mean, it sounds like I'm being harsh on him, but in a situation like this, you know, where you need to win these games, sending out a player like Cezanne, it just seems... It's a surprising decision to me, I guess. But Definitely. Pretty balanced team. Yeah. Of course, they have more turns than the other race. That's not naturally, uncommon. Yeah. <laughs> naturally, Wolf. There's just a lot more Terrans out there right now. Yep, that's right. And uh, it's been fun to see some of these newer guys play on this team as well. I mean, Vines we've seen play a couple games. He's actually not in that picture now that I see that. But uh, we've seen him in the past. The STC, you know, back from the military. A lot of people love watching that guy play as well. 
Yeah, looks like he's gonna shoot laser beams out of his glasses like Cyclops <laughs> or something when he's got his hand poised like that. That's why he wears the glasses, man. If he takes them off, his eyes just shoot yeah. lasers randomly. Gotta watch out for that. Just like Cyclops. It's gotta be the lamest mutant power, you know, just randomly having beams coming out of your eyes all the time. I don't know, man. I wouldn't mind it as long as I had the special glasses. I guess. It's like you have to use one arm to use your power, though. You can only ever have one arm free if you're using your mutant power. Yeah, what if you're, like, driving and you, like, don't have a cup holder, but you need to use your powers, then what do you do? I know, yeah, You have to exactly. drive with your knee. <laughs> He's, like, holding a hot coffee and trying to drive. He needs to use his power. He's like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can see TSL and MVP, which will be both those teams we play later today, very close in points. And OGSTL, F United, F United has no chance of... Uh, making the playoffs with if OGSTL yeah. loses they won't make it and Prime will actually make it so Prime is actually sitting back at home watching this going I hope they lose yeah, so that I can that? clinch my spot that's that's kind of crazy Prime the team that up to uh, this season had never won a match in the team league has a, a chance to go to the playoffs this team league is really kind of shaking things up in the uh, StarCraft 2 Korean scene. I know, look at Slayer's number six right there. Yeah. Nobody expected that. No kidding, I didn't expect that. I mean, even below F United, a team that consists of a lot of foreigners, most Koreans would have scoffed at the idea That's right. that Slayer's would be below F United, but here we are. They would have held their belly and laughed. But oh. if F United loses today, Slayer's will take their fifth place spot. That's, that's true, that's true. They can move up. It's like the wind drinking some five-hour energy or something right there. I don't know. Something out of a small <laughs> bottle. It's getting ready for the possibility of multiple TVTs in a row. <laughs> yeah, it's possible, man. So, so uh, an energy drink for that. Yeah, well, some of them. I mean, it's it's a, it's a one of those matchups where it's it's actually my favorite matchup. Don't get me wrong. I love TVT, but there's some games, you know, where it gets a little bit long. But, gets a little bit long sometimes, yeah. especially in the team league when a player's trying to tire out the other player and you just keep... <laughs> He won't leave the game, and then you've got the Spoon Terran play, and the Spoon Terran's like, I know. well, I may have 150 supply, you may have 13, but I'm going to slowly move my siege tanks forward. I've got to yeah. be careful of the possibility of the Broodlings coming out of the hatchery. I'm not sure. It's like <laughs> Thorzane. It's, it's the next day. The other matches have to start, and he's like, hold on. I've I've almost got him. It's, well, if you know. stay it's in fun a BNet game for, I think it's seven hours and some odd minutes, it actually just disconnects you <laughs> really? by default, as what I've heard. Um, well, there you go. Maybe like nine hours, I don't know exactly, but... Yeah. Now, uh, uh, that's Brock important. Yeah, that's important. Um, yeah. The Code A preliminaries will be broadcasted this weekend, so Doe and I will both be there. We had a lot of fun last event. time. So make sure you tune into that. Yep. More so, importantly, here's our starter for F United. He is going to be Moon, obviously. Yeah. We made Fox War 3 and StarCraft 2 player. This is his last appearance. Yeah, if he loses this game, this could be the last game we see Moon play in a Fox uniform. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see him on another team pretty quickly. This guy's pretty good. This guy is really good. Um, yeah. His record doesn't show, obviously, because that's a Korean record, but for, in the foreign scene, he's actually done quite well in lands. This guy's traveled so much in his Warcraft 3 career and in the StarCraft 2 career that he has a lot of travel experience. When he goes to other lands, he just doesn't get nervous, he doesn't get tired as easily, does pretty well Yeah. outside of Korea, but inside of Korea he hasn't had as much success as some of these other guys that we see. Yeah, not quite yet. Um, I've got a feeling his best days are, are still ahead of him. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, when I watch... Actually, when you watch Moon play StarCraft 2, you actually just can't even follow what's going on if you sit behind him. Now, here is fast. Cezanne, again? our player. Uh, again, we, we talked about this earlier. He's just a player that seems to be somewhat of a surprising choice, but OGS has a lot of confidence in him. His record... 18.2% wins, obviously not very clear, and you, we've talked about they used him twice, he lost both times, you can see his yep. GSTL season 1 record there, 0-2, that's this season, of course is the first real season of GSTL. They keep putting this guy out there, Wolf, is he is he going to win a game, is the third time the charm for OGSTL Cezanne? Keep in mind this is going to be a Zerg versus Zerg, so, yeah. you know, Moon's going to have a lot of chances to use his Warcraft 3 micro skills. Oh yeah. Absolutely, especially if it comes down to Zergling Baneling Wars. I mean, Micro is the order of the day, and the map they're going to play on is Terminus. Pretty big map for a ZVZ. Yeah, it's quite large. We could see a longer ZVZ. We're probably going to see that Roach and Fester style if the game goes a little bit longer, but we could see oh, all, yeah. and, you know, many number of things because ZVZ is changing so much right now. You know, it. I actually like that this is on a big map like Terminus because I do want to see kind of a longer ZBZ. I want to see what happens. Looks like we're going to in just a couple seconds. This is the GSL Team League with Doa and Wolf. We're about to see Moon and Cezanne duke it out. Who's going to come out on top in game one?
All right, so down here at the bottom of the map in the yellow, we have our Zerg from the team we made, Fox. Yes. Every night did it. Good. Should just said the Zerg with a short intro time. <laughs> there he is. And up at the top of the map, all the way across, is our Zerg player from OGSTL. OGSTL, Sejanda. I didn't get time to say, named after a renaissance painter. But now you all know, Yes, yeah. I told you afterwards. That's right. Actually, what am I saying? Cezanne wasn't renaissance at all. I'm sorry, art nerds out there. I don't know Silly. anything about, like, oh. oh. I didn't quite get to read that there. sign. Happy yeah. Knight and MC fighting and hero. There's like all these parentheses. <laughs> it just keeps going down. <laughs> just like, it has they like everybody. and then parentheses. It's like a math problem. I'm trying to read it. <laughs> I come back and the sign will be crossed on. It'll just say everyone fighting. I'm like, wait, we have to go back because there's a multiplication <laughs> sign. You have to do that before addition. <laughs> I'm not good at math, man. I don't know. I have to find the derivative. I'm like, no. I just want to read the sign. All right, so. Neither of these guys made a spawning pool, so looks like we're going to see 15 hatches from both of them. Yeah. And that's not uncommon given the size of this map. People have really found out how to hold early pools with this build anyways on a large map like this, so they both feel comfortable doing it. Well, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, uh, like you said, it's a big map, and, and uh, back in the day, hatch first was kind of the norm. I mean, it wasn't until people started doing a lot of the 9-pool, 10-pool stuff that people went back to uh, scouting earlier and not getting that hatch first. Yeah, and pool going down at the exact same moment for both of these guys. Like a very standard hatch first opener. It's a mirror match, Wolf. It's a mirror match. Mirror. You can see the line of symmetry on the production tab. Oh, look at that extractor going up oh, first. Never mind. For Moon, he, he wanted to ruin that line of Thanks symmetry. Thanks for ruining it, Moon. And oppositely, Cezanne got an extra drone. Well, nobody's perfect. No, but, well, what can you say? I wouldn't even say one build is better than the other. It's just that. It's a variation in the style. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean... Oh, well, the line of symmetry thing. No, right. it's perfect. Right, okay. No, no, I wasn't criticizing uh, Moon's decision to get an extractor at this point in the game. That's a horrible decision. He made it three seconds Moon later. is terrible. He's going to lose. <laughs> Hatchery's finishing up here for both of these guys. Yep. And More Ling's being made immediately for Zazan, so he wants to get out there and start finding out what's going on. Obviously... These guys have passed each other's overlords, so they know where their opponents have spawned. So they're just kind of sending those overlords slowly across the map. The other uh, overlords on the other side of the map have met each other too. Yep. Scouting overlords meet. Idea. They're friendly with each other. Shook well, yeah. They shook tentacles. Overlords are, are going to be friendly with each other until they uh, start arming themselves. It's just like World War One, man. You know, the scouting planes would pass each other and the pilots would wave, and then one day one of them like, waved and the other one pulled out a gun. And thus, air combat was born. Oh, it's I'm true, sure man. I'm not even joking. That's how it happened. I'm sure that in the heart of the storm, there's going to be some sort of hive upgrade where the <laughs> overlord tentacle lash or something, where it shoots cyclops lasers out of it. He just like he slaps them with his overlord tentacles. It's like his new attack move. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I, actually, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm thing. sure that well, they've got to do some sort of overlord upgrade. It is the Zerg expansion? I don't know, man. There is this overlord upgrade called Morph the Overseer. That's true. Well, I mean, we need more, you know. Maybe. Well, yeah. Baneling Ness going down for Cezanne, and a Roach Warren going down for Moon. And to be honest, yeah. I like the Roach Warren choice here. It's a larger map. If you get that Roach Warren first, you can already start building that Roach count. He oh. immediately cancels and makes his own Baneling Ness as the scout is killed. So that's a nice little tricky move. There's a spine already up though mm -hmm. for Cezanne, and he denied that scout. So I like the Roach Warren choice because. If you make the Roach Warren, then you get a few Roaches out to hold Banelings, and then you already start building that Roach count that's so important. But it looks like he's not interested in doing that anymore. He wants to make no. a Baneling Nest and do something surprising. But with that spine crawler there, and with a Baneling Nest of his own, Cezanne should be completely fine. Well, I, I suppose, you know, maybe in theory he thinks, all right, if he thinks I'm making Roaches, he's not going to make as many Banelings. So if I make more Banelings, suddenly I have, you know, the advantage then. That's right. kind of the weird stuff that happens in ZBZ. There's a lot of mind games that take place in the early game for this matchup. Definitely the most mind game of matchups. Yeah. Now, Overlords for Moon are all over his side of the map, so he knows if scouts are coming. He's even killing the Overlord of Cezanne that came close to his base. Oh. He's made 25 Zerglings right now. Did you notice, too, that uh, Cezanne has his own Roach Warren on the way now? Yes, he does. Hmm. So he's like, all right. 
You're making and roaches, I better make roaches too. Ooh, he actually hit a ton of his Zerlings, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to save his queen unless he sends those oh. lings and shows them. What and is fact, that he's doing? Oh, he saves the queen wow. just barely. Link saves the queen. Zerg saves the queen. <laughs> Roach Warren finishes up here for Cezanne. Since he hasn't invested that much in those lings, he's got a lot more drones. He's got seven more drones, in fact, right now. Hmm. But is he going to be able to hold this attack? I don't know. In fact, there are so many Banelings out here. He only has the one spine. Yeah, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, where Moon just can have more Banelings because Cezanne doesn't expect it. Here he goes. Oh, a lot of Links dying to the Banelings. Oh, what the? And Moon is not. Oh, the. Some of the worst micro I've ever seen, yeah. to be frank with you guys, by well, Moon. You know, when we talk about Warcraft 3 micro, that's not exactly what we had in mind. Not exactly what we no. had in mind at all. And well, the roaches are out here as well. Not enough wings to uh, clean those up and ooh, losing all the <laughs> well, I just I'm like, I just I, keep going well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might get no, he's not even gonna get the queen. That was uh that was like a, a Hindenburg level. And he is still there. he is still continuing with the ling production. He made his own roach worm, but he wants to continue this pressure. Yeah, he's making a lot of lings. I mean, he is finally starting to drone at home. Didn't really do a lot of damage with that. Yeah, I, I would say uh, to, to put it bluntly, that was rather unsuccessful. Yeah, it was uh, basically a huge disaster. But what can you do, man? The game goes on. You can't get depressed. You can't get down on yourself, Wolf. I'm I'm fine. But right. uh, Moon might not be. Now, as as okay. these lings are going to get targeted down by the Queen. There's not that many of them in there, but he does see everything. He sees the Roach Warren has been made. He sees how many drones that Moon has made. Yeah. Right now, for Roach counts, we've got six Roaches out for on to no Roaches out for Moon, but he's making six of his own. So we're going to have somewhat of an even Roach count. And actually, the drone count has evened up here, both of them hitting about 39, both making Evo Chambers. Yep. I mean, uh, in, in ZVZ, a lot of times you just have to try to keep up with your opponent. You know, if your opponent does something and you don't, a lot of times things can go pretty badly. Yeah, that, that can be the case. Now, Lair going up for Cezanne, whereas Moon has decided to take a quicker third base. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Cezanne makes his own third base. That's interesting. Moon's actually going to come in here and see this. He has to be very careful with his lings, though. Yep. He's not want to waste them on Banelings. Yeah. And in fact, doing a much better job this time with his control does come in here, scout, sees how many ro roaches there are, and in fact, he's going to get into the main. Yeah, he's going to see absolutely everything. Oh, he's going to get the queen, morphing. maybe. Nice Gets it. Queen. Nicely done. This is more War 3 micro right here. Yeah. Running around, dodging roaches, killing queens. Now, this is a huge move out by Moon in the middle of the map. He's got a much better roach count here. He does. Does Sazan have enough to handle this? I don't know. Moon's going to have his plus one weapons a little bit quicker, too. In fact, that plus one weapons is going to actually it's going to finish right after he gets to the base, so it may not make a big impact. Right. Well, Cezanne will be able to hold back at his base because he did make ten roaches, and with yeah. that defender's advantage, he should have a better concave here as well. He's going to want to set up for that. Also, having those banelings there does really help. Well, it looks like Moon just wanted a little bit of breathing room, so knew he could chase Cezanne back a little bit. Did the that. The problem here is no, that. The Roach Speed is on the way for Cezanne much earlier than it is for Moon. And when that finishes, if you have Roach Speed and your opponent doesn't, just allows you to micro your Roaches so much better. Yeah, absolutely. It essentially adds like 30% Roach Fire to how much you can attack because you can start a step forward, whereas your opponent can't keep up with you. Nope, but the Overlord will see the huge Roach numbers. And uh, now that the Queen is dead, that Overlord will live a little bit longer. Oh, never mind, there is a Queen there. So I guess it won't, Wolf. I guess it, the uh, Overlord's just gonna die. <laughs> I guess so, it's man. It's kinda sad. It is a little sad. It's all right, though. Oh, Overlords see. die every day. Yeah, that's true. There's more where that one came from. He accepted from. the risk when he went to scout. That's right, he knew what he was in for. That Overlord is a hero. He really was. Um, because now Moon was, had time to prepare. He's got 14 <laughs> roaches in production to I help hold this off. I gotta say, um, you know, there's debate on whether to spread your creep in ZVZ, but I like, you know, what Moon's been doing with that. But here comes a push from Cezanne. Ooh, and Cezanne's Roach Speed is about to finish. He's gonna want to use that to his yep. advantage here. But the problem is, Moon is just gonna have more Roaches because he's defending and we're at cross map. This is what we were talking about earlier is we're cross map on Terminus. So now he just pressures and he forced the Roaches for Moon. But meanwhile, back at his own base, he got that Infestation Pit. He's getting the Pathogen Glands. So he's gonna have Infestors out faster. So Cezanne is really just setting the pace of this game with his pressure. Well, you know, it's kind of one of the weird things about ZVZ as well, because if 
you know, most Zerg players at this level always know exactly when their opponent is moving out and exactly what they have. And uh, that makes it really, really tough for attacks to succeed in, you know, ZVZ a lot of times. And that is why you start to see this group spread, so that you can make yeah. your attacks, you know, if you have to walk across the map, you're, obviously your opponent's going to see it with Overlords, he's got the towers, whatever, he's going to yep. see the attack coming. Now, Moon's Infestation Pit just finished, he's just now starting his Patching Glands, whereas Cezanne's got five Infestors on the way, they already have the upgrade. He's got Roach Speed, he's got plus one weapons for his Roaches. Roach yes, Speed Cezanne. just finishing up for Moon. He's just one step ahead in every regard, but Moon has a, a fourth base. Not often we see ZVZ get to four bases. Will he be able to hold on to it, though? That's the question. How much good is that really going to do him? You know, I I really think he's going to struggle to hold it, given that there are a lot of Infestors out now. There's five of them with each having a Fungal. There's a lot of Banelings in the mix here as well. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Moon just doesn't have as much stuff as Cezanne. He doesn't have the upgrades that Cezanne does either at this point. Here we point. go! And Roach is running uh, forward here. Uh-oh. Missed Micro Moon. by Cezanne, but here come yeah. the Fungals! Oh. All right, that's going to be a lot of damage to the Roaches of Moon. A lot of damage from the Fungal Growth. And with the damage from that, Cezanne should be able, maybe not actually. Well, he does push Moon back, but the Roach count's still fairly even right now. Yeah, Moon getting a little bit nervous there. You think he might have been able to hold, but it's really hard to say. Yeah. The Hatchery does finish, but now Cezanne pushing through with a much higher Roach count. All of his Roaches on full hit points. Yep. He's going to be able to take out this hatchery no problem, whereas he's taking his own hatchery. Meanwhile, oh. and no more fungals on these investors. Uh-oh, Moon having a much better concave than Cezanne here. Oh, yeah, that was a big, big kind of miss arrangement for his army there. And Moon's actually going to clean up these roaches fairly easily. Yeah, yeah with his reinforcements coming in, he's going to be able to reinforce a lot quicker. These investors not going to be very useful. Going down infested Terrans with yep. minimal damage. And so he has to back up just a little bit here, but... With the better concave, of course, he will be able to chase Cezanne ah. back. Decides to burrow and heal as Cezanne retreats. But Cezanne has taken a supply lead. Even though he didn't win that fight, he was able to kill the hatchery, and that's what really matters. Whoa, and Roach is being rallied right into the maw of Cezanne's army. Whoops. That doesn't help. I lost now, like six Roaches there because of that. As far as worker counts go, they're both dead at 62 drones. Yeah. Obviously, Sazan having a fourth base is really going to help out the saturation. Oh, it looks like Moon wants to punish I that. I don't know. And having a much better concave because Sazan didn't react quickly. But will it matter with these fungals? I'm not sure yeah. it's going to. I don't know if this was the best idea. It doesn't look like it was. Fungal really, really balances things out. You can have that better concave, but look at that. Sazan just pushing that back easily. Yeah, and right now the roach count is 37 for Cezanne to just 20 of Moon. Yeah, that really gave Cezanne the lead there. Exactly. Moon has his fourth base being remade, but he's losing a lot of mining time. One thing Moon does have going for him is he is getting plus two Carapace a lot faster than Cezanne. Cezanne hasn't even started his yet, so he's going to have better upgrades than Cezanne very quickly here. Mm -hmm. Plus, his own investors are going to start joining into the mix. And in fact, Cezanne actually does not have Burrow either. So those are the things that Moon has going for him, but the problem is the sheer Roach number, I think, is going to be what really rules the day here yeah absolutely i mean that's what it comes down to a lot of times i mean you can see moon being like all right i, I just can't make as many roaches so i'm gonna try to make speedlings get a little bit of a surround maybe try to mess up his concave if i can but these are kind of desperation moves from moon right now it's true and it looks like Cezanne decides it is time to go moving forward trying to get that concave and look at that beautiful concave oh. in fact <laughs> two shots the had with all of his roaches wow Losing a little bit of his concave here, but will he get some fungals? Yeah, he's got a lot of roaches attacking that extractor. That hurts a little bit, but look at that. Just uh, pushing just ahead. Way too many roaches for Moon to handle. Moon cannot hold the fourth. Yeah. And in fact, he's trying to get an investor. He's actually going to push all the way into Moon's natural. He knows oh. he has that much of a lead. Good little fungal there, but there's just way too many roaches. Force is on. Yep. Meanwhile, Speedling counterattacks in Cezanne's natural and in his main. Killing a lot of Cezanne's units. It's going to do some damage. And actually, if Moon holds this right now, with the damage Moon is doing in Cezanne's base, this could be swinging the other direction. Yeah, up at Cezanne's base, up at the top. Yeah, you guys, you didn't get a shot at it, but there was a lot of counterattacking going on up there. Yeah. Even so, though, Cezanne only is five drones down right now. Yeah, well, good move by Moon, though. Still has a huge roach advantage over his opponent, so he's just going to sit back 
regroup his units and attack again, and Moon will not be able to continue to hold. Yep, now Cezanne does have just a few less drones right now, but not enough really to do much of a, to make much of a difference, rather. Moon's gonna try his best here. He can use the concave to his advantage if he fans out his roaches a little bit. Oh. Looks like he's not going to, and Cezanne pushing through here with more reinforcements and even uh, some changelings coming <laughs> in here. To try to, to turn the, the tide. Changelings are gonna make the difference. I can feel it. I don't think so, man. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like these roaches are just gonna barely help clean up here. It's not gonna end the game, but he's just gonna continue to trade because he has a better economy. He has more production, and Moon's not gonna be able to hold on forever. This nice microbice is on as well, targeting down roaches. This CVZ has been such a slugfest, but in the uh, in the end, it looks like Cezanne is the one. He's standing and Moon is kind of staggering right now, but... And Moon's holding here, but again, he doesn't on. have the production that Cezanne has. Cezanne has four hatcheries. Yep. He's got the ability to make drones on all those. He's got more saturation capability. I guess you could say saturation capability. It's saturation. one of the stats. It's like that a is list. a fancy term, man. He's got more saturation capability. Saturation capability. We'll need to put that in, like, the appendices at the end of the... The StarCraft 2 book, so people know what we're talking about. Moon keeps making changelings and sending them <laughs> out on the roaches. Not really making a difference. Moon does have that burrow, which allows him to regenerate his health much quicker. Doesn't have burrowed movement, though. No, he does not. Yeah. Now, four investors have enough energy for a fungal, and this may be enough to seal the deal here. Cezanne moving forward, but he may get trapped. Oh. Oh no, is he gonna target the investors? Oh, nice fungal trapping those roaches, but the fungal goes down on Moon's roaches as well. Yeah, and it's the uh, Terrans coming here, add some extra DPS. Yeah. It was a nice idea, but I don't know if it's gonna work out terribly well for Moon. Yeah, so yeah Moon's just, just trying to hold on here, but he can't. Nice fungals again, and some of these roaches going down. Yeah. Part of the problem, of course, is on just not having that burrow, but even so, he just has so many roaches. And the Overseer has arrived. That's going to be it for Moon. He just can't hold any longer. I think so. I think we're about to see that GG. Trying to fungal his way back, but there are just so many roaches streaming across the map with Cezanne. Well, Moon is kind of like a real roach infestation. It's just really hard to get rid of, you know? Yeah, it really is. It's difficult to get rid of those roaches, but... Keep coming back. When you have your own roaches, take care of roaches. That's right. Sometimes you can. You just need your own roach army to take that care of That little investor doing a dance there to show that he is no longer interested in this battle. <laughs> uh, and, uh, 87 supply to 33 moon just is no longer has the production. He doesn't yep. have enough drones. He just can't continue to hold. He's done a great job so far of just trying to hold on wave after wave, but he just can't. And thus will end Moon's run as a We Made Fox player in the GSL. Yep, you're seeing it here at the GSL. GG. GG! There it is. So, OGSTL taking a quick 1-0. Well, not that quick, but quick-ish 1-0. Cezanne gets his first win in the team league, and Moon obviously not too pleased with that. No, absolutely not. I mean, Cezanne yeah. just set the entire pace, and then CBZ, when your opponent sets that pace, it's very difficult to make better decisions. And Moon was like, well, I have to have this fourth base. And Cezanne said, well, I won't let you. And then Cezanne yeah. just kept cutting down the fourth base. And having the fourth base isn't even always about the mining. It's about having that fourth hatchery that you've committed to. You get so much extra larva, and when you have that extra larva, if you can man maintain a better roach count than your opponent, even if he has infestors, or even if he has plus two carapace before you, if you can maintain that roach count lead and you can keep up the production, your opponent's always going to struggle to catch up. There's not much you can do to catch up when your opponent has more roaches than you. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely. no, like, there's no siege tank. There's no unit like that. You can't be like, well, I'm going to make this specific unit to deal with this to counter the fact that you have more roaches. You can make infestors. They do damage. They slow down roaches, but... Yeah. Well, you know, the infestors for Cezanne did make a big difference in that game, too. I mean, yeah, that, he had them that out helped fast. quite a bit. Yeah. So even though, basically, Moon always had this defender's advantage, mm -hmm. and so Cezanne would have way more roaches, but when he got to Moon's base, Moon would have an even number of roaches. And that yeah. happened for a little while until there were five infestors, and that's when... That's when things got a little hairy. Yeah, and uh, by hairy we mean sticky yeah, with fungal sticky. stuff. <laughs> sticky I don't know. Situation. Well, who is We Made Fox United or just Fox United, I guess, going to send out next? It is going to be Lynn, it looks like. Yep, going to be Lynn. There he goes. So we're going to have a TVZ on our hands. Oh, maybe not. They're just messing with us. It's actually going to be soccer. We are going to have a Protoss versus Zerg match on our hands. And soccer, you know, he's a, he's a lot like Cezanne. He hasn't had a lot of luck in the team league yet. Yeah, very true.
Yep. So there he is. Fox Soccer. Yep, they've played him twice. He's lost both games. Yeah. And his record in the GSL, he played in Code A, lost all of his games. Yep. So not a lot of GSL success here, but obviously the not yet. F United coach feels comfortable using him. Well, I mean, the other Protoss they have is Naniwa, right? And they probably want to save him for later. He's, uh, you know, going to be one of their key players, as we saw. Yes. Yep. Keep in mind, Soccer was a former Warcraft 3 player. That's but true, too. All these guys were. I was yeah. told that Soccer actually did not train for WCG for Warcraft 3. So he's really? had the most experience with StarCraft 2 hmm. in the past, you know, month to a month and a half to even two months. Okay. Really, whereas Moon and Lin have been really practicing, practicing, practicing. We're going to take a look at some coach interviews. So stay tuned for that. Well, 어 일단 프라이 팀이 저희 팀을 많이 응원하고 있는데 어 응원에 뭐 보답하는 의미에서 오늘 열심히 해서 OGS를 한번 격파해 보겠습니다. 어 끝까지 많은 응원 부탁드립니다. 네. 일단 OGS 어 박상희 감독과 꽤 이제 친분이 있어요. 뭐 어렸을 때부터 같이 게이머도 했었고 상당히 친한데 뭐 친한 건 친한 거고 뭐 경기는 경기니까 오늘 뭐 저희 팀이 꼴찌지만 방심하지 마시고 끝까지 최선을 다하길 바라겠습니다. 저희도 어 비록 떨어졌지만 최선을 다해서 꼭 이기도록 하겠습니다. 예. <웃음> 어 아무래도 팀 리그에서 그렇게 많은 승리를 거두지 못했던 이유도 있었던 것 같고 그리고 팀원 모두 하나가 돼서 같이 연습을 하면서 뭔가 이뤄냈다는 그런 약간 결실이라고 할까 그런 것들에 대해서 선수들이 많이 기뻐했던 것 같아요. 저도 물론 마찬가지고 뭐 준비는 지난 주와 똑같이 그렇게 선수들 위주로 이렇게 선수들의 서로 마음 맞춰가지고 서로 상의하면서 그런 식으로 준비는 했고요. 의지는 선수들 다들 이제 무조건 플레이오프 가야 된다라는 의지가 굉장히 세요. 그렇기 때문에 오늘 꼭 승리할 거라고 생각합니다. 네, 어, F 유나이티드는 이미 탈락 확정인데 너무 이렇게 무리해서 힘쓰지 마시고요. 오늘 저희가 꼭 이겨서 올라갈 테니까 플레이오프에서 저희 팀을 많이 응원해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. I can just kind of picture the F United house this week like they're getting all these gifts from Prime and OGS. They're like, "Hey, we love you guys. How you doing? How's the family?" Well, you know, <laughs> the wins interview started out so almost majestic. He was like, you know, our last win, our team achieved this together. And we That's feel right. ready and we want to go to the playoffs. And then he goes, so I hope the other team doesn't really try that hard because, yeah. uh, you know, we want to go. I was like, wait, what? Uh, two different attitudes know. there. <laughs> it's like the majestic eagle soaring and then flies into a tree or something like that. But, uh, yeah, so obviously everybody loves the, uh, the We Made Fox coach. They're like, hey, buddy. How you doing? You gonna try hard to be <laughs> yeah, OGS? Yeah, Prime really wants them to uh, yeah to win. That's Prime is cheering for F United pretty hard. Some Prime, there's some Prime fans out there. Yep. cheer hard. You for should F be cheering United. for F United too. It's true. Yeah, you know what match I hope we get to see today? I don't know if we're going to, but Naniwa versus MC. We came into the makeup room today. Uh, MC was sitting there. We walked to the studio with Naniwa, and we sit down. And MC turns to Naniwa and he goes, "You see this fist?" <laughs> And we're like, all right. <laughs> so MC wants to uh, play against Naniwa. So we'll have to see if that happens. It's pretty funny, though. Yeah, they've got uh, a yeah. bit of a rivalry. <laughs> they've yes, met they each do. other before in foreign tournaments. So. It's the ultimate manor toss rivalry. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be moving into the game pretty soon here, I'd imagine. There they are. And our map is going to be Taldrim Altar. I like Taldrim Altar, Wolf. It's a good map. Yeah. It's one of my favorites ever since they introduced it. I remember when the rumor had it that GSL was going to add these new maps, a lot of uh -huh. people were testing them. And I remember when I first played on Taldrim Altar, I hated it. And I said, <laughs> the tile set is too complicated. There's too many trees. It's too big. 
But then two weeks later, it was back. In, it was in the GSL, and they had made all the improvements that were necessary. And yep. I was like, "This is a beautiful map." Then, like two weeks after that, it was in the ladder map pool, and now it's the map that we use. We're using the Blizzard edition of the map, you know, at the GSL. It's definitely a, a, a map that's kind of grown on me too. I, I didn't like it at first either, but you know, it's one of those things. The tile set was really different when it first came out. Yeah, too. I, I think well, they, they always had those little. Aspect. Uh, hexes in the middle, yeah. but those were always really cool, but I didn't like how many trees they had before they changed it. Anyway, that doesn't matter at all. What matters yep. is that we've got Soccer challenging Sazan here. Can he tie it up? Will Sazan pull his team ahead 2-0? Let's find out at the GSTL.